Mm. Wow, where's my picture? So I have to change the device straight away. Sorry, guys, I may have to change the device. It looks as if I can't, you can't see me, I can't see you. What? A new device. Hmm? Yeah, but where is the picture? <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Sorry about that. I I thought I may have used my money to eat uh, Gelenje. I didn't know that. It's still okay. I'm going to look at the retained right of residence after uh, divorce from a EA national husband or wife. And that's what we're looking into straight away. Let me quickly do some other things that I usually put in place before the recording. I forgot to start this off. Oh my god. That's not a good broadcasting. Sorry guys, sorry guys. Sorry guys, um, good evening to you. If you're just joining us on this platform, it is just six o'clock here in the United Kingdom. I want to welcome you aboard. Apologies for not setting up straight away before coming on the seat, but it's okay. I am here just purposely because of you. And when I'm here because of you, I want us to be very serious. Please like and share and let everyone that is not online, let them take it now and join us on this few minutes that I'm going to spare. <clears throat> I haven't got all days to spare on this um, question and answer issue. But then before we get to that stage, good evening, good evening, guys. Good, good evening to you. I want to look at a topic before the today, and that is on the retained right of residence. Retained right of residence for those who have married, thank you, thank you, thank you, who have previously married to EA person, whether your wife or your husband, and as a result of some situation between two of you, the marriage is no longer subsisting no longer subsisting. I love you guys and I like you for doing, giving me that accolade. That will enable me to know that you love me and you enjoy what I'm doing in the community. God bless you all. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. I'm a lot more John. Thank you. Thank you to all of you. God power. Thank you. Thank you, God. Moon Rose. Fumula Miracle, Elizabeth Michael. Thank you. Thanks to all of you. <clears throat> I'm seriously looking into the uh, right of an, a non EA wife non-EA husband that married to European national person. When I say EA, EU, European Regulation Area, European Union as a citizen, is at the end of the day, is the same thing. I'm referring to the same uh, um, system. So that is fine. Now, the thing I want to address today is that a lot of people are in a kind of dilemma. They have, the marriage is no longer subsisting as a result of them having problem in their relationship. Now, bear it in mind, no one is perfect in his or her relationship. So don't let anybody come out and come and tell you that, oh, I am perfect. I am doing okay. I am doing all right. It's a lie. Even me that I have married to my husband, Olag Baye, since 1993, that I have married to him since 1993, I am still not perfect. I'm still looking for one way or another to make sure that I pass, I put this together and make sure that it work well. So I am still not perfect. And when you look at 1993, today's date is 26 years. 
that I have married to him, but I'm still not perfect. So I do not want people to think that they are perfect in their relationship. Nobody is perfect. Anything can happen. There can be shake up. There can be turbulent. There can be anything. And sometimes people can no longer continue with that relationship as a result of adulterous. And adulterous is in different format, different ways. Some people bring it to insult you. They bring you to your face to insult you. Some men are very respectful. Even if they are doing it, they respect their wife at home. They will not let you know. They are scared of you. It's not they are scared of you, but they gave you the respect you deserve as a, as, as, as a certificate wife. <laughs> if you may like, you know. So, in, in that relationship, then you can still say, okay, that is fine. It's not that it's, it's fine. But sometimes some people are so rude, either male or female, they would want to slap it on the partner's face in the house. And when you are doing it koro koro to your partner's face, of course the marriage will no longer subsist in because it's an insult. For example, you leave a wife in England and you travel all the way to Nigeria, let me to concubine. Who are you going to say kill you? That's the question I'm asking you. You leave a wife and children in Niger in England and you travel all the way. Eh? Now, if you if something happened and you died in between, who are you going to say killed you? One the thing that you know how you know to how to eat best is what killed you. And it won't be any man's fault, it's your fault. So, so, so many people when they are in relationship and they can no longer endure the bitterness, the arrowing of it, the, the insult coming through, the violence, the emotional abuse, then they haven't got choice, I'm afraid, right? They haven't got choice other than to come out of that relationship quickly. They have no choice at all other than to say, listen, enough is enough. Let me get myself out of this. Honestly. Honestly, rest in peace, Neil. Simple. <laughs> now, it's, it's, you see, people are saying that, oh, I, I can manage it, I can push it. Because people can no longer endure or manage it. As a result of that, European regulations create a way out of it. European regulations create a way, in a way that at least, you no longer enjoy this relationship and say, get out of it. Get out of it. But under immigration rules, there is no way out of it if it's no longer existing, unless there is a child holding British passport. And even if a child is holding British passport, if that woman compel it, if that woman go against it and say, listen, you are a violent man, you are an abusive husband, you are not reliable, you don't... Uh, you don't maintain your maintain the home. You don't maintain the maintenance. You don't maintain the wife and the and the children or child involved. Emotionally torture. As a result of that, there is no way on this planet you will go through Kafka successfully. Kafka will block you. That is the family court division. They will block you because the emotional torture of it is too high to endure. And when the report come out, judges are not stupid in court. They look at situations surrounding circumstance of every individual. And as a result of that, they take it on from their end and move it forward. So if a woman is suffering in the hand of a man, and you think your husband is a, is, is a member of European Union country, and your marriage has lasted three years, the loophole is there. I'm not the creator of the art. And if a man is also sovereign at the same time, because as it is in, in, in left hand, so also it is in the right hand. There is nothing come without the other. Everything in life is made double, negative, positive, minus, plus. Short, tall, light, dark, fat, slim. So it's always double, double. God, how God did it, I don't want to talk about it. But the point here is that if you think you are struggling, the 2006 regulations have now been revisited into 2016 regulations. Thank you, Jocelyn Boegi. Thank you. It has now been revisited. It's been re revisited in a way that it now accommodates. Even from day one, from day one, it does accommodate. But if you are holding British passport, 
or you are a spouse, a spouse of a British person and you are messing about that you are brought from Nigeria into the country on a spouse visa and you think oh, where to take with that? you are starting your own, you are digging your own grave your hand has not reached a quida honestly if you are a spouse and they brought you in on a spouse visa from country outside United Kingdom and you are thinking that oh they have brought me to this country I'm going to do what I like Believe me, where will you take with that? Because if you, you are given two and a half years, you are still going to need your wife or your husband for the second two and a half years. Even when you are going for indefinite leave to remain, he or she needs to approve it as well. So you still need that for about five years come. You will need for renewal of another two and a half years. And then at the end of that two and a half years, you need him or her for the indefinite leave to remain. So in total of about three years, Please, my save this video. It's, 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 on the, it's in the public. All my videos are for public use. Once I bring them out like this, it's for you guys. It's not mine. It's for people to learn from it, to, to educate each other. Share it. If you know you are not available, please put it on your wall so you come back and have it. But I'm not deleting. I'm not taking it off. It's yours. You understand? So they are digging their own grave. If you are, if you are, immigrant, uh, you are a spouse... And you think that you have come to UK and you have got your two and a half years. You are digging your own grave. There is no way you can skate through without your partner. Especially in a scenario where the child that connects both of you hasn't got British passport. If you throw, throw what is it called? Knife down 200 times. It's going to come, come up with the same side. Keep throwing it down. It's going to be on the same side. It's going to come down. In my language, they will say, Toba ju abebe sle ni ba igba. Be no de ni obe. The same side. You know what I'm going so it will be so difficult for you to change to change that format. So it's a wise word for whoever is out there that thinking that I've got two and a half years, I have a retained right of residence. Mm -mm. You haven't got retained right of residence under two and a half years. It's under immigration rules. So if you maltreat your partner, your wife or your husband before the end of your two and a half years, and for any reason he or she proceeds to, to report you to the home office, you're stuck with your dirty destiny. You're stuck. Because if it's not a dirty destiny, I don't, I don't know why somebody will insult Allah Anwe, who no real spouse, somebody who is sponsoring you, somebody who takes care of you, somebody who cares about your journey in life. I don't know why people have the gut and the audacity to insult somebody who is helping them. So, he, he, he. Ma, can someone pretend to be in love for five years waiting? Oh, yes, definitely, my dear. Olari, why do that? Yes, definitely. I've been in practice for, for years. A lot of people, sometimes they are not interested that they will manage and endure and go through all the hardship. As soon as they get what they wanted, they will be off the track. They will go. And a lot of people have their main person that they want to marry. They have them in Nigeria, in Ghana, elsewhere, and come to UK unnecessarily to display their lunatic at the highest. Because that's what I think it is. But I won't say it all here, you know. I won't say it all here, but I think it's a display of lunatics at the highest. Because if it's not a display, why would somebody come? Well, if it's not a display at lunatics, why would somebody come, understand, and, 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 and behave in such a manner? So the point here is that you will not have a retained right of residence. You understand? If, if you're married to a British person, now the person who will have retained right of residence is the wife or husband to EU citizen after the dissolution of their marriage. The question of fact there, which is so easy to pieces under 2016 regulation, is that, you see, there's a case law that we, we chew in court we chew that case law. I am going to, not going to leave it out there to public. I'm sorry. But that case law is saying that in that case law, the Secretary of State accepted, excuse me, that a third country national, in order to retain a right of residence in the UK, that case law is a recent case law. 
So whether it's 2016, 17, 18, 19, I don't care. But it's just recent, so recent. And when in law we say something is recent, believe me, it's recent. Because we can use 1877, we can use 1932, we can use 1944, because it's, it's, it's relevant to the scenario before D. But in this peculiar one, it's so, so recent. It's so recent. But I'm not giving the case law out, and I'm not giving the year out, because I'm not a lecturer. I am only doing it for the diaspora. So, the Secretary of State accepted that a third country national, in order to retain the right of residence in the UK, in reliance on Regulation 10.5 of the 2006, which is the old one, Regulation, you did not need to show that your former year spouse exercised treaty rights as a qualified person until the divorce itself. You did not need to show. But rather than making it more difficult for, for people to understand, I'm making it more difficult for the interpretation of it. The judges sat at the, at the high court, you know, at, at the appeal court. They sat and come to a conclusion on the 2016. So they revisited it. It was revisited. It was revi re revisited in 2016. And as a result of that, it's now saying that it is sufficient to show that the EA spouse exercised treaty right until the divorce proceedings. Until... So what we are looking for in a simple mathematics here, yeah, in a simple layman's English is that if you have your husband or your wife and something happened between two of you, unfortunately your marriage is no longer continued. So you don't have choice other than to call it a day. Because the quickly you call it a day, the more individual can go on their way and have a clean break. Now you only have that clean break provided there is no child between two of you. But if there is a child in that relationship, you are not going to have clean break because Section 25A will be holding both of you down in the best interest of that child. Leave that aside. Let's treat this for the purpose of clean break, that there is no child in the relationship. One of them is EU national. The other person is from Nigeria. Let's assume. They got married in a certain year, but they are not getting along because there is a problem and he just feel that he's, he's, he's the God. And but human can never be God. But he thinks he's God. So as a result of that, he's just flirting in and out, carrying women like carrying handbags, you know. Carrying women, flirting in and out, and doing it to her face. You know, insulting it. All the time he does it, he insults her. The insult is too much and she can no longer bear it. You know, it's unbearable. So as a result of that, she decided to go through the divorce proceedings. Now, the problem is that at the time she was going through the divorce proceedings, she did not even start the divorce until possibly, let me look at it, until possibly the relationship or the marriage has lasted almost five years or so. But don't forget the rules in that situation is that the marriage must last three years. The marriage must last three years, and both of them must show that they have lived together in the United Kingdom for at least one year under the same roof. So even if you have lived together in, in, in Netherlands, in Spain, in France, in Germany, in Dublin, in Hungary, that is not part of it. The part of it is that you have lived at least one year as man and wife in the United Kingdom. Because this is where you are asking for that right to be retained. So at that stage, you have left your country to exercise treaty rights. So the rules under regulations, will, uh, European regulations will have to be used. They will prevail. So if you cannot prove that both of you have lived at least under on, 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 one year under the same roof, your application will fail and it will fail gallantly. Now, if you manage, if I'm not saying you should manage, but you endure your relationship for a certain period, and unfortunately, you could no longer continue to see the insult or the abuse passing on to you all the time. I'm coming, Yinka. I'm coming, Yinka. They call you. I'm coming. I'm coming, Yinka. Hold on, hold on. Let me hold on to your question, Yinka, and I'll come to it. But you have to explain more for me, Yinka. So. If you're no longer able to endure that sovereignness, I will say, because I see it as sovereignness, and I am not prepared to put my destiny through sovereignness. So I don't know why people manage 
relationship. Relationship is not something you have to endure, to manage. If you can no longer enjoy it, your life confess and you are the number one. In no ramification. Because if you are saying because of children, those children will live if you die. Hmm? Those children will live, they will survive. Because their destiny does not attach to yours. No matter how hard it may be for them to survive, they will still live. If a man died because of his wife, if a man died because of his wife, he, his wife will still live. Only any totori any totori obiri kuni egbegbe mo obiri lo ba koda ni bi Do you understand? Ask those ones that I have represented in the past. They will tell you whether yes or no. <laughs> ask those ones that I have represented in the past. I don't ask. I'm not, I'm not here to bluff. Let me just do what I am doing, please. So don't st stop, stop distracting me. Let me concentrate for now. I beg of you. Let me concentrate. When I'm pieces in law, it takes a God to pieces law. Law is not a baby's subject. So when I'm pieces in it, yeah, I want to concentrate so that I don't lose my concentration because so people will hear the video later on so i have to concentrate so you can no longer endure that relationship and you want to come out of it now if you want to come out of it you have tried to manage and manage and manage but unfortunately you could no longer endure so after three years that you have now seen that the marriage has lasted it's not that you knew intentionally to make the marriage last three years but you now pursue the divorce proceeding. You now make application to dissolve that relationship. You know, if you if application going, it's not the day you submit it that is they're going to grant the divorce. There has to be nicris, there has to be absolute. So it doesn't come out just like that overnight. Now, the bottom line here is that the case, the case law is saying that it is so sufficient for you to show that at the time. At the time you submitted the application for divorce, that is the 2016 regulations, different from 2006, 10 years gap on that we have spent to, to do the law, 10 years. In fact, it's so new. Sometimes some, some case laws can be there for, for 50 years, for 40 years, and we will still chew it. There are so many cases, law, case laws that we have done when we are doing contract law, that a uh, land law, that they are so old. Than, than a building in this country. They are hold. And you will see them under 1877, 1922, 1922, 1932, 1940 something. That is what they call law. But because immigration law is an administrative law, it is tend to change from time to time. And because we have incorporated the European Union regulations into our domestic law, we have power to pass it on and to revisit it. So the judges from the appellate court, from the appeal court, they decided to revisit it. They actually revisited it as a result of complaint from senior practitioners and pieces it. And this particular case law, it was a case law, it was a case that happened and they took to court. And that is when the judges have the autonomy to sat and decide the way forward to pieces that regulations now what the regulation is now saying is that what is crucial what is crucial most is that the ea person must be exercising treaty right until divorce until divorce proceedings until the divorce proceedings were commenced so he must be working until the time they submit the application for divorce <laughs> I like that. I like that. I like that. I like that. And you see, and that's why I love law. Because as a lawyer, I can rob you into a problem easily and get myself out. Because the way I think, the side of my thinking is different from yours. You will be thinking from a different angle entirely. This particular case 
we were in court and the judge came to court. The judge came to court with a full arrogant mind. In an arrogancy attitude, he came and he was full up of everything in his head, thinking that he will batch me, he will push me aside, and he will throw my case into the bin, and he will refuse my appeal for my clients. And I was watching. I allowed him to sat, and we, we, we came in, he came in, we were already sitting, so we have to stood for him and acknowledge his presence in the courtyard, in the sitting. So as soon as he managed to have his seat, straight away, he didn't even concentrate on the home office person. He just passed it on Mrs. Olabaye. Mrs. Olabaye, Mrs. Olabaye, have you heard that, 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 and I smiled. And I allowed him to finish what he's saying. Then I look at the case law through Google, and I said to him that the case law is saying more or less what I have in my head. And that is how we started the dialogue. We did not even go through the formalities or anything. We spent two hours on the dialogue. The case owner is online. We spent two hours on the dialogue. At the end of the day, we resolved. And he even acknowledged me and I appreciate it. Because he acknowledged me in his, in his determination. Because I gave him. I gave him some evidence as to when my, my client lodged the petition for divorce. I also said to him that I believe that the petition was lodged before the divorce proceeding, before the, 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 the before certain dates that he was looking for. But in law, you don't speak on hearsay, you speak on evidence. Mr. Ibrahim Okonlaon, good evening, sir. Yes, I like your Asaki. Good evening. We speak on evidence, not on hearsay. So no matter what people say, if you don't have evidence, I don't talk. I don't have time. So what we did is that he too followed the proceedings after when we dialogue with the home office person and we argue and argue and bring out case laws, bring, bring out documents, bring out this, bring out statement, make submission, give the skeleton argument, did this, did that. He now say, okay. Ask the home office person. Home office person said that I was right. So home office person said that she hasn't got choice. And she's a counsel. Home office person was a barista from chamber that they instructed. So she accepted my case and said she would drop from me. That I did very well. Now, the, before the judge accept, accepted that uh, dropping to withdraw from me, the judge asked us again clearly, whether we are able to provide those documents because it will be charged as content of court. So I asked my client, I said, are you sure that you have this document in the house? Because I wasn't the one that did the divorce for her. She did it herself, possibly. So I said, are you sure that you are the one that, that you have this document? She said, yes, ma, I am pretty sure. So for evidence to know that she did it, I look at the bank statement, I show it to the judge that HM court took money around this period. So I'm a bit relieved because I don't want to be charged for content of court. So I'm very careful as well. So if somebody says I'm too careful, yeah, they are right. You have to be careful when you are in a country like this that have jurisdiction and they, they are very articulate in dealing with documents. You've got to be very careful. So at the end of the day, what we finalized was that to have that return right of residence, and it wasn't five years residence card we are applying for, don't forget. We didn't go for five years. I went for PR. I went for PR and I got it. I went for PR. I didn't went I didn't went for five years. I actually went for PR. I said to her, Moon love PR me. Because you can see that you can see Thank you. Thank you. So the, the, the situation here is that the relevant date of submission of the divorce proceedings is very important under the 2016 regulations now. The relevant date. Or daughter submit the Bewolefu HM court, family court division. That date is very crucial now. So you have to bear that in mind. The 2016 regulations is looking closely if you're going for PR. Even to have retained right of residence in any circumstances, you've got to show 
You've got to show. Aha! I knew you were going to. Somebody's going to ask me what is PR, permanent residence. I intentionally coded it. Yes, I intentionally did that. I knew you were going to ask me. <laughs> I knew you were going to ask me what is PR. Yes, I knew you were going to ask me. <laughs> Thank you, Jerry. <laughs> so basically, so at the end of the day, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Thank you all of you that know what I'm saying. Thank you. So at the end of the day, it happens that we were able to to dialogue, to convince my sitting judge very well. And we were given assignment immediately. The home office person was given an assignment to go and look for the case law that came out as a result of that 2016 regulations. So she went to her senior or to the office to go and get it. So she didn't send it to me. She sent it to, to the judge. The judge gave me an assignment to send him to his home address. He didn't give the home office person his home address. He gave me his home address to send him my client's date of uh, initiation of a divorce proceeding. To send him the bank statement to show the money went out of the account to the HM court. To send him, I think it's one or two things like that, to be sure that we lodge the appeal. You know. And what really, really helps us a lot is my experience in doing this work. It is the experience that I used. When that client came to me and there was a problem on ground, the way I advise and the document I asked them to go and obtain is what made the difference to that success. It's that exactly that brought the difference to the success of that application. It wouldn't have been successful if not for experience that I have had in the past on retained right of residence. So I told that client, I said, this thing must be available for me to prepare it and put it in the bundle. That by the time home office will receive it, <laughs> so, she managed to get me that particular thing on the paperwork that I wanted. So I served court, I served home office, and I served every parties involved. It is one of those things that the judge saw in the bondu and came with the arrogancy in mind and said, okay, you think you're clever, so you have managed to advise your client to go and get this thing before me. I am going to come out to you on 2016 regulations. But yet, at the end of the day, what I have in mind did not change anything. So we still managed to go through. So the law changed in a way that it's even help you more. It's even help you more. If you are in a kind of dilemma situation like that, take advice. Don't just put your head into it. If you are a wife or a husband of European national and you are going through some turbulence in your marriage, get advice before it's run you to 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 the end of everything get advice get advice before they put you to the last journey of your destiny don't just mess up inside it blessing <laughs> so sure you understand so to, 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 to get the retained right of residence, it depends on who is handling that matter. But I can assure you, I can assure you, it isn't a problem at all. I can assure you, it isn't a problem. You know, I can assure you, it is the problem. So to have a retained right of residence, there are rules and regulations that you have to look into. But you're not going to have it if you are a spouse. Of an immigration of a British citizen. I don't have power over it. Let me just treat law. Those things are factual, and I don't have power to change home office. I have power to put case before them under law. My my jurisdiction is lawyer lawyer jurisdiction. I don't have power to change. <laughs> To change policies, honestly. I would probably want to say it's discrimination. 
if you ask me, my Kiki Nakaya, I probably would say discrimination against non uh, European uh, citizen discrimination, but then it's got a long history. It's got a long history. You know, it's got a long history. How long does it take to get an appeal date or an appointment? It depends. It depends now. I think they are brushing up now, so you could get it within two months. You know? Yes. I think you can get it. Prozzy marriage doesn't work. Don't waste your time on prozzy marriage. Please, who is doing that? Please don't do prozzy. From day one, I against prozzy because it's nonsense. It takes two to tango. And marriage between two people, they have to be there to, uni to unite together. They have to be present in the front of the judge or the registrar or, or the reverend who is going to put them together, who is going to bring them as man and wife. So if none of you were present at the time they were doing that uh, ceremony, then it's just a ching chingum ceremony. It's a chingum ceremony. I won't take it serious. You know, I won't take it. Are they with me, Thank you. Yes, check my page. My details are there. No, the English you wrote in 2015 is expired out of date. The, those English tests is two, two, two years. So the English you may have written in 2015 will be out of date. So no, no, you won't be able to, you won't be able to do that. No. Lawyer, what if the EU citizen refused to provide a passport and supporting document? Please read my, my comments. Okay, I'm reading it now, Abby. I don't want to pin it down because I've pinned Yinka one down. I want to answer Yinka first. Lawyer, please, what if the EU citizen refused to provide her passport and supporting document? Then you are stuck. You are stuck. Because if you are just going in, listen. Preacher son, take advice. I'll give you some tips. Preacher son. Don't let me, don't let me base it on me. Preacher son, take advice, okay? Take advice. If you have time, phone and book appointment to come and see me. I'll give you a tip of what to do. Yeah, yeah. Take advice, preacher son. That's about that. Yinka Adekoya. This is the page. On this page, you go back on this page when I finish. Simon, I'll do. I'm going try that. She's chef. Don't look for everything easy, easy. Go to this page and get it yourself. The phone number, everything about me is on this page. So when I finish, you can go in there and start checking. Or even you can go in now. You don't have to stay online now. You can look at other things I've done. And then you take my phone number, my office, my everything there. Yinka, they call you, what if the British person is the one abusing their partner? Hmm. Then you have to get out of this relationship as well. You don't have to die there. Honestly, you don't have to die inside it. I'm sorry. I'm a lot more done. Say maybe you deserve it though. Ah. <laughs> I'm a lot more done. Behave yourself. Yeah, preach us on yes. Uh, if, if the British person is the one abusing their partner, that's going to be a bit difficult because you won't be able to go through if, she, if he or she is not helping to support your application in the next renewal, then you're stuck, you know. If the British person is not supporting you on your next renewal, then you are stuck, you know. Um, Yinka is saying that what if the British person is the one abusing? You can never say no. It's not impossible, you know. But before me, I assess case on individual merit, you know. And that's, that's the way Home Office does it as well. They look at it on individual merit, you know. So, um... Are you serious? Mashiu. Lawyer Tokumbo, all this advice you are giving for free online is about 600 pounds consultation fee for about 30 minutes in Norwich. Did you see that? Did you hear that? I'm going to keep your line on this. I'm going to pin you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Larry. Why do you leave me there? You see, I enjoy. You see, it's okay, Larry. Why do you? It's not about money. You know, sometimes in life, you are doing something and you are enjoying it. It gives you, it give you joy that you are helping people. I always crack joke. I know it's a joke sometimes, but 
You know, if I go to church and I don't pay tithes, I don't pay over church, what I am doing here has paid more than enough for my church tithes. But I am still going to pay what I want to pay to the, to, the, to the church. You know, I'm still going to do what I want to do to church. But if I don't do it, this thing is giving me rest of mind that I am helping people. Do you understand? You see, there's no point to come to this world and you don't impact people's life. So forget about the money. The money is fine. You understand? Don't worry. The most crucial part of it is the enjoyment I derived from it. Don't forget, I am a qualified solicitor. I'm an immigration expert. I can eat anytime. I can never be dried of food. Go possible. I want to talk about Those who are taking 600, have they got to my stage in their life? If they have, we should clap for them. They have done well. To be honest, to reach where I am. They have done well. So, it, it, is, the, it is the blessing of God, you know, that is helping, that, it, that will be enriching people's pockets. And when someone doesn't have the blessing of God, then you, can, you may be charging 1000 You will always be wasting that money. You will not know where you, you put it. But for those who have the blessing of God with what they earn, they are happy and they make use of it and their life move forward. You see, I'm enjoying this work. I must tell you the fact. I love helping my community and that's what I'm doing. And when we say community, it is not about Nigerian community. It is all those who are in the diaspora. It is all those who are in the diaspora. And this is why I said that I am for everybody. Even when I'm driving, I cannot abuse anybody. I cannot say, oh, yeah, okay, the way you drive is wrong. I can't do that because it will happen to be, it might end up being one of my clients that I have helped. It might end up being one of my fans that's following me. So I am, I, am, I am made for everybody. And so also I just have to do what I can do. Simon, I, I'll do, thank you. So I just have to do what I can do. Don't worry, all of you. All you need to be doing is to, in addition to my prayer, also be praying for me as well. That's all I need. But when people come to office for consultation, I charge them the minimum 50 pounds. I charge them. I charge them. You understand? But don't worry. Let me just carry on. Let me just carry on doing it like this. It makes me happy. It gives me joy. And it makes me sleep well when I get home because I am doing something that I love. You know, it's a, it will be a different scenario when you go to work and you don't enjoy what you are doing. You get fed up. You don't want to leave your house. You know, so that is just the situation. It's not about money, 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 money. If you those who are charging one fifty, two hundred, at the end of the day, go and check their shoes. Their shoes is like a uh, Baba uh, Eleanor, Baba Nibata shoes anywhere you want to see it. But that's not the kind of life I want to live. You understand? I want to be a role model to people, and that's what I'm doing. To tell people that you can get it done, but do it neatly, do it properly. In anything you do, just be honest with it, be upright, and then you have peace of mind. And that's all I'm doing. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's about 2016 regulations on retain rights of res residents. Let us recapture before I leave. Time is of essence. I need to go home. And my car is waiting to pick me up. So, um... <laughs> Yes, yes. Let us recapture it. At the in his, in his, in his, in the, let's pronounce it very well. Initiation of the divorce proceedings. So when you want to initiate it, you have to make sure that the EA person is working in the country until that day you are submitting the application. Honestly, you have to make sure that the person is working in the country until that date. And that will give you hedge forward. Thank you, Mrs. Epeme. It's been a long time. For those who are asking questions that, how do I know that the person is this, the person is that, he doesn't give me this, doesn't give me that, take consultation from me. I will tell you what to do. Take consultation, then I will tell you the next thing you need to put together before you put in an application. So if any of you is on your five years now, before anything, please take advice. Don't go and mess your destiny up. Because it will be a slap to you that you have had documents before, right to work, and you no longer have right to continue to work in employment. It will be a great mistake. So please, take advice. Mr. Okonla one, yes, it is likely that Brexit will affect everything. But the way Brexit is going now, we are more likely to ask for extension. You know, let me just predict in advance. We are more likely... 
to ask for extension. But leaving Europe, we must leave Europe. We must respect democracy. We must respect the choice of people. We must respect the electorate, those who vote to come out. So we must give them the opportunity. And that is what they call democracy. So we are definitely coming out of Europe. When is when I'm not too sure. So what they will be thinking of is possibly to go in and to go for extension for March 29. Instead of March 29 to be the date of submission, we will need to ask for further extension. But I would doubt it if we are not leaving. I would doubt it if we are not going. We are going to go. You know, it's too close to the headline. <laughs> What is the home office take on domestic violence if the partner has not gotten their papers? Who is doing what to who? You see, Yinka Adekoya, the question is, who is going through the domestic violence? Who, who is the abuser and who is the person taking the, job, uh, the, the beating? Is it the EA taking it? Is it the European person taking it? Is it the settled person, rather? Is it the person with paper taking it? Or is it the person that can't make a white jam? So we need to find out who and who. Is it the person that you invited to come and eat that now hold your hand? Do you understand? So we need to find out who is who. You see, if asking me a question of that, it's difficult for me to come to a conclusion and say, listen, this is the situation. There is an allowance for domestic violence a, a, a victim with the home office. But the point is that you must take a, a spouse visa to come to the country through that person from abroad. The person must have invited you on a spouse visa so you are with that person. And you must be in the same house. And there must be an evidence of that abuse that you are going through. Either through the women refugee, the police report, the medical, the anything in the area that can give you evidence. You will need that if it's immigration rule spouse visa. Then immediately it happens. You will go back to the home office and go and change your status with all the evidence and make application. So they will they will take that one away from you and give you three months visa. Now, if they grant you three months leave to remain in the UK, before the end of that three months, you will be going in to apply for indefinite leave to remain. So it doesn't matter. Even if you just spend two months on that spouse visa and you are going through domestic violence and there is there is evidence to prove towards it that you are going through domestic violence. Home office will take the spouse visa off. They will give you the three months uh, leave to remain. Before the end of your three months, you will then be applying for, uh, what is it called? For uh, permanent, uh, indefinite leave to remain. You'll be applying for indefinite leave to remain. For a European person dishing it, it's going to be difficult. <laughs> European person dishing it. Yinka, they call you. Are you a he or she? Because all of you are just uh, in a different name and different uh, sex on on this line. Sometimes when she sex change, but on Facebook, you always change to a man or a woman. Anyway, um, thank you. Spot on advice. Thank you. George Lawrence Badejo Adegbenga. Spot on advice. <laughs> it is well with you. John Mackinde, please answer this question. Which question are you putting through to me that I can't answer? Let me see your question. Amen. May God bless you with all your advice. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. Thank you. John Mackinde, where's your question? Please, oh, is cheating a domestic violence? Is cheating a domestic violence? Yeah, that's adultery. If it's adultery, it's emotional torture. Yeah, it is. It comes under emotional torture. And it's double dating. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a lot more John. Yes. Um, for those who are online, can you answer this question for us again? Is cheating a domestic violence? Please, can you talk about it for us? Can you answer us back? Yeah, is cheating. Let me quickly pin you. You, Amalamo. Please, is cheating a domestic violence? Can you comment if you can see us and you can take it? Ma, you're supposed to open branch in Wolves. The information is not for me. Okay. The answer is adequate. 
Your advice is worth more than money, ma. You are blessed. Thank you, Wilson Roger. In your me to talk from day one. I may not see you face to face, but I know you always come on my life from day one. Lata yeah, la lu mole. So I have you respect. I respect you and I do have my heart for you. Cheating is an emotional abuse. Thank you, Betty. Cheating is an emotional abuse. Thank you, Betty. Yes, yes, yes. People are coming in. A way I says it is a way I do a She said it is an it is emotional abuse. Thank you. A way are they? Yes, yes. That's what I said. Yes, a big one. Yes, cheating is the root of domestic violence. So marriages are open marriage. We are married couples cheat. If she can prove that she's emotionally abused, yeah, it is under an emotional violence, as you said earlier, ma. Thank you, patience. Albert, cheating is not a domestic, it's not because no one is harmed. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> it's not domestic, but it's an emo emotional abuse. Can you put your hands up out properly? Albert, because you have me to turn Albert JB for a long time. Albert, can you put it out properly and let us know that it is not domestic, but it is an emotional one. It's emotional abuse, you know. Yeah, it is violence. Yeah, not violence, but emotional one. Yeah, emotional violence, yeah, emotional abuse. It's not violence is when you have kind of physical things, you know, dragging and but emotional one is abuse, emotional abuse, you know, when somebody cannot show evidence, but you are you are being tortured. For example, if a man have girlfriend and bring the girlfriend to your face and is taking that girlfriend on top of you, it's an emotional abuse. It's a torture on its own. Yeah, for me, yes. Yeah, Allah Unif. Thank you, sir. It is emotional, but how easily will it be to prove? Yeah, you need to have evidence that he doesn't stay in the house all the time. You need to track his phone down. You need to track his WhatsApp down. You need to track who he's chatting with down and see whether you can have pictures as a form of evidence. Of course, it is an emotional, it's emotional abuse. And I stand corrected. Yeah. Stanley, I'm in the United Kingdom I'm in, and I'm in London. Please, addition to what Lato Kumbo said, please let no one go and from go and and form fake domestic violence abuse. <laughs> Jackson Joseph, behave yourself. Jackson Joseph, behave yourself. It's worse than domestic violence. Exactly, exactly. It is worse because somebody's you cannot scream out. Sometimes you are just going through that torture, you know, and it's difficult. And the person oh shame me or me. That is the kind of situation you are you are taking care of me and you're also abusing me. You understand? You know, bringing girlfriend to the house or chatting girlfriend in the middle of the night or keeping your phone, passwording your phone. And to you guys as well. Some guys as well are doing the emotional abuse to their partner as well. So it's not about men, men, men alone. Some girls are doing emotional abuse as well by having some friends out there, girlfriend or boyfriend, having boyfriend particularly, and you are chatting your man friend when you're supposed to say you have you supposed supposedly have a partner. And at the end of the day, the partner in the house thinks that you are the only wife she has, he has, or you are the only partner he has. But at the end of the day, you got some other men out there funding your bill. Funding your bill. There is some fear, it's not good. You know, so it's not about men alone. Women are some women are also in the habit of that nonsense. It's emotional abuse, it's not violence. Violence is a massive word and can be used differently. We can rephrase it, we can look at it differently when there is physical abuse. That is violence. When there is attack, that is violence. Cheating is a domestic and emotional abuse. Yeah, there is a way you can pop into the his box and got all his conversation out as evidence without him knowing. Exactly. Hmm. Expert, I do your gumba. Expert, <clears throat> if you get married in the UK and one partner is British and the other is overstay, can some apply to the home office? John Mackinde, if you get married in the UK and one partner is British and the other one is an overstay, you will not be able to have status in the UK unless, unless either, either both of you have child together and the child is registered as a British citizen under the British partner person, or one of you had a child from previous relationship, either of you had a child from previous relationship, and that child is under 18, and is in the United Kingdom, then you are in a safe hand. 
But if none of you had child previously, and you haven't got child at the moment, and one of you is over is an overstayer, and the other person has British passport, you better start thinking of traveling back home and go and make that application. Because if you make hundred attempt application, it won't succeed, and you'll be wasting money. And look at the NHS fee, how difficult it is to manage to get now. You can see how hard NHS fee is now. You can see it's so expensive. So I won't even encourage you. If no child in a relationship and no child from previous relationship in the UK, please don't waste money. For Larry, please my question, okay? Where's your question? You know, I can't see all the comments you guys are putting out. Hello, ma, if Home Office lost case on applicants in court of appeal, not of a pool, court of appeal. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much. I appreciated your effort, Simon. I'll do it. It's well with you, Simon. It is well with you. You see, say thank you to me in the public here. Don't go and privately inbox me, all of you. Say it here because I may I won't come inside the inbox and respond back to you guys. So you have to say it here so that I can comment back at the at the bottom of it and say you're welcome. If Home Office lost case on appeal in the court of appeal, how long does it take to get back to applicant? It depends on Home Office. It depends on Home Office. So you have to wait for Home Office to come back to you. So it's actually depend on Home Office, but I haven't got power over mm -hmm. it. It is well with you, Simon. I'll do. Thank you for appreciating my work. God bless you. Yes. It is down to the Court of Appeal, um, RMO. Yes. Bello Taiwo Alabisi, my cousin got married to a France lady, a French lady, and used her document to apply for visa, and it was refused like three, like three months. Hello? Hello? Hello. Yeah. So if your, if your cousin get married and it was refused like three times, well, we later find out that the lady got married to another man. Ma, what can we do? Then it's not in relationship with your friend. Your cousin is not in a relationship. The person is in relationship with another person. Hello? Hello, are you on the live program? I, I am, I am. Who is this? Okay, I'll come back later. I like travel. Ah, uh, I'm coming to talk to you. <laughs> uh, okay, all right. Okay, okay. You can call me on that number, you know. You can call me on that number. You know. Mm. Okay, yes. So, uh, if your cousin got married to a French citizen and and the document was used to submit an application to the Secretary of State in the United Kingdom, but they refused three times and later found out that the lady got married to another man, then that means that they're not in a relationship. So, she, she, he, he should have smelled it long time ago, you know. He should have said, he should have, um, should have smelled it. He hello? Hello? Yeah, hello, dear. Hello. Yeah, hello, ma. Please, I just want to ask a question. Please go ahead. Yeah, um, in a situation whereby um, a mother gave birth to her children here, but she only took them back home. So about a year ago, she came back with them on a visa, and they are they overstayed, obviously. So, uh, is it possible for them to to apply for the children? What what type of application is she going to apply for the children? How long has the children been in the UK for? Four years. No, they haven't met the seven year rules. They've lost the ten years residency thing for them to stay in the UK from birth ten years continuously. So it's a bit difficult. Okay, so what if the um, the person with the British passport is the children's legal guardian? If the person with the British passport is in charge, where would the mother be? Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Thank you very much, ma. Thank you.
Hello. Hello, ma. Are you online, ma? I am online, indeed. Uh, I want to ask a question. Make then go, go ahead. When I finish, you will not be able to get through because I'm going to take my line off. So if you want to ask a question, now go ahead now. Nobody yeah. cares about anybody's voice now. Okay. Uh, I have a friend. He has a son that has a kiss, right? So the boy doesn't have anything. doesn't have status in YouTube. But the mommy has status. Like he got like two and a half years. So what can he do to make the boy not to go back home? The child came in under what visa? Under what status? Over state, but it's been here like 13 years now. The child has been in the UK for 13 years? Yes. So why can't they apply for the child under seven year rules? They, they apply, but they, they keep on refusing the parents and the child. But in 2018, and they they gave the mom or the boy is in prison so what can they do the boy is where in the prison so it's not going to get anything then it's a foreign criminal if he's in prison and he hasn't got status so he's going to be treated as such as one so that is very dangerous so he probably will be facing deportation at the end of the sentencing thing so there's nothing you can do about it. It's already in prison. If it's because if it was before it went to prison, it's a different ball game. But it's in prison already. He needs to sign all the documentation. So who's going to grant it on these very difficult immigration rules? Okay. Yeah, you have come forward and get it before the you know. He could have come forward to do what. He will have make application now before he went to prison before he got himself yeah, into. Yeah, he has an application in. But they refused the application. Of course, they have so to. No, 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 no. He, he before he went to prison, he has, a, he has an application in, but they sent it back because he's uh, he's above eighteen. He's doing that that he was eighteen, that he was got arrested. They are going to be serving him section one twenty on deportation. Mm, so there's nothing the parents can do about it. Even the person that has indefinite leave to remain is struggling and is in prison. He's struggling to even ask them to revoke the, to stop the deportation. The person that got indefinite leave to remain. Mm. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you so much, man. Thank you're, you. You're most welcome. I'm so grateful your, your encouragement towards people. Thank you so much. You're welcome, my dear. Thank you. Bye. Hello. Hello. Good evening. Lower your device. Lower your device. Lower your device. I didn't say I want to spend long time, but you guys have heard me on, and I don't have choice. Let me quickly answer all of you before I leave. Okay. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I want to ask a question. Please go ahead quickly. Uh, if, uh, the EU, and, uh, if you get married to someone in UK and you get divorced before the five, what is going to happen? If you are an EU person yes. and you divorce your wife. Yeah, before five years. Before the five years you got expired. Why is everybody thinking about five years? Five years. If marriage is not working, it's not working. Uh, if marriage is not working, what's gonna to happen to the party that I have with five years residence in UK? I don't know. Because if the marriage is not working and you saw you told the person that the person should leave, it means that you don't want to be the person's sponsor anymore. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. Hello? If you are on the line, you listen to my advice since the inception of this program today's date, then you will follow me on smoothly. But you can pick up this video later on anyone that wants to look at the situation on a retained right of residence. You understand? Hello? It's what? Hello? Yeah, I'm coming. Let me cut off the other person so that I can hear you. There's a question that I, that I wanted to ask. Please, please go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Um. Let's say you're married to a to a to a British man and you have a child, which is a British too, and you you got separated because of medical issue maybe he knows about your medical condition 
and then that time you guys were already se separated they give you an extension of two and a half and when you went to the housing like to to the no recourse to public fund team like to do an assessment where where we, they can take off the no recourse on your card and you just received a letter from the home office stating that they gave you because of the man and because of you, you are no longer together they have taken it but they have given you a right to no right to appeal and no right to to review but they gave you a, a, a date for you to make in a new application for further leave to remain and if you apply under your child what well, what will happen has your child got British passport? Yes, yes. Yeah. So if you apply under your child and you are not applying under your uh, partner and you are a single parent, if you are struggling financially, then you ask them to take off the no recourse to public funds from your card. Take off the okay. condition. Okay. Yeah? Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you, my dear. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Good evening to you, Christiana Diola, and good evening to you, Ogene Kome Omoruji. Those, those two just join us. Good evening with your accolade. Thank you so much. I, I acknowledge you. I recognize you. And thank you for the gift that you sent through Adiola. It has arrived this morning. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Uh, hello. Uh, I want to see if uh, the program is live. Or it is live. The program is live. It is live. Uh, I really want to ask a question on the program. Yeah, if you want to ask a question, go ahead. Yeah, the, the, the question is, um, <laughs> I, I, I'm just asking on behalf of someone. Eh? Exactly, Peter was asked. Thank you, Peter. Please go ahead. Okay, um, so someone has um, been sentenced to prison for less than a year for some financial issues. But well, he's got British fees. Uh, the issues will they will and they I mean the person is considered the sentence will be given a petition or that. So will the person still be deported or is there a way that because of the British fee he's got he will be able to um, um, have some form of appeal or respite? The person has British passport, but he has a financial uh, a fraud issue. Yes, no, no, the person doesn't have British passport. The person has a British child. Oh, British child, okay. So the person hasn't got status at all? No, no, no. So it was mm -hmm. on two and a half, and then they were supposed to renew, but by the time that financial issue came, while they were on the issue for quite a number of years, they just put a hold on the, on the application. And of course, they have to go to, to prison for, I think, eight months or so. They're not going to grant the application if it's in prison. They're not going to grant it. The same so the that the same that right, the they, get, they will give him Section 120 rights, so you need to make representation to the Secretary of State on Article 8, the reason why he must re remain in the UK, the, the reason why they must not deport him. They will give him Section 120. Yeah. But to say that they will grant that 30 months leave. Ah! To so even despite, you know, the effect of the child or, you know, those sort of... It doesn't, it doesn't bother our home office. It doesn't bother. What the Secretary of State is trying to do is try to dissuade, you know, try to prevent people from committing crime when they have not even got the boat when they have not even got both legs to stand in the UK they're not saying that British citizen is okay to commit crime but at least British citizen will be sentenced like normal people but they will be freed and be walking on the street of UK again because it's their country but somebody who is carrying another country's passport of course you came into somebody else's country you're supposed to afford and follow all the rules and regulations and maintain yourself properly in that country so that's the whole campaign that the secretary of state is saying that i'm not going to accommodate you because you're being naughty you are a foreigner i allow you to come to my country and you are now stepping on my toes i i am irritated i want to send you back you now are supposed to be responding back and say sorry sir i apologize for my offense i have not done this before i made a great mistake 
please forgive yeah. me. I've got my wife in the country. I've got my child with a British passport. I have a family life. I have nothing to return to in my own country. I have no yeah. business and no family to turn to. I have left home for a very long time. Please pardon me, sir. So, what would, so with that, with that pathway, what would be the what are the chances that if you know, as you apply it, if we if the individual uses that uh, that argument? It's a serious case. You see the way I just said it. When I draft section one twenty in my office, about nineteen pages. Hmm. Mm? Section 120 is about 19 pages because it incorporates everything about the person's life and about the law on family life and cases that have happened in the past that they have pardoned them. And the argument of the senior counsels and senior practitioners and judges' determination, you have to incorporate it and look at the guidance of the Home Office and put them in for that period and you have to look at the interest of the child section 55 border citizenship act so it is not just a baby draft maybe we would uh we'd have to see how they can come and see you i've got so many of them this time around i don't know why people just get themselves into that situation but if you're ready just come and take for if you're ready come and take advice okay yeah Oh, thank you. Thank you for the good work you're doing for the community. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hello, dear. Yeah. Hello, ma. Yeah. Please. Please go ahead. Please go ahead. Go ahead quickly. I want. I want to find out, please. Is this the lawyer, please? Yeah. This is me. Please go ahead. Yeah. Please. I want to find out if. Uh, Two years living together, does it work? With a British person, yeah? Yes. Do you have do you do you do you have child together or any of you got child in the country? No. It's a no go area. Ah, uh, when they've lived together for two years. And there's no child and one of you has overstayed. Yes. Hmm. Hmm. It's too much money uh, to, it's too much money to waste. Okay. Okay, I know the way I'm giving them advice. They will still go and attempt it elsewhere, but they are going to lose their money. So don't worry about that. They're still going to lose the money because government hasn't changed its mind. Hello? Government has not changed its mind on that two years uh, living together without a child. You know, so if you don't follow it, don't follow it. Hello? Hello? About two, three of you phoning at the same time. True caller is bringing call. Another person is bringing call. Hello? Hello. Good afternoon. Good evening, ma. Good evening, ma. Hello? Yeah? Good evening, ma. Good evening thank to you. Thank you, ma, for the job. Yeah, thank you so much for the job. Thank, thank you. Um, yeah. I, I want to ask a question from a friend of mine. Um, Salom has been refused. So she wants to know if it's is, is it possible for her not to go for the appeal and put in fresh claim because she's got a child that is um, to be able to be hit this year in March? Say it again. I'm reading comments, so I lost my concentration. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I want to ask a question for a friend of mine. I asked her has been refused. So she wants to know if it's possible for her not to go for the appeal and put in fresh claim. Hmm. Why can't she go for the appeal? Oh, they're, go, they're going to be they're, nah, they're, they're going to be very very mad with her if she fails to go for her appeal and make a new fresh claim. They might refuse it. Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. They're, okay, they're going to be mad. The first. Yeah, oh, she needs okay. to go. She needs to. She needs to exhaust the appeal right. Okay. Yeah. Once that appeal right has been exhausted, then she will now have the opportunity to make a fresh claim on a fresh on a fresh evidence. Fresh claim on the fresh evidence. Not to repeat herself again on the previous like the previous one. Okay. But um she's thinking she she put she wants to put a fresh claim on this child that needs to be hit this year. The child was born in UK. But she needs to she will use it as part of her argument in court, but she should pursue the appeal. So if she pursue the appeal, there is likely there is, there, there's, there's more likely that they're going to consider under the seven-year rule. So even if the appeal is not successful, they will answer her 
under that rule. Oh, okay. Thank you so much, ma. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, You're ma. You're most welcome. Thank you, ma. Thank you, ma. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you that um, I'm, I'm, my partner is over there. Yeah. Who? Okay. My partner. Yeah. And um, uh, uh, we put a child in the UK together, and uh, he has um, um, uh, uh, he came as a visitor, but he he overstayed. So. I just wonder whether it could be possible to legalize this thing. So your partner has overstayed in UK? Yes. Okay. Hold, hold on. Hello? Yeah. Hello? I'm, I'm on a live program now, but where are you? Uh, I'm actually in uh, near Nottingham. My now, um, no, no, no. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Not you I'm talking to. Hold on. It's what? Oh, sorry. Eh, be a kid, be me tell us, be more total. No worry, we live program. Hmm. Yeah. Cause I didn't come with my car. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry about that. I just asked my husband to pick me because <laughs> I didn't come with my car. So I just look for free free ride instead of the taxi waiting downstairs for me, so I can answer you guys before he comes. Hello. Okay, yeah, young lady, okay, go go ahead, please go ahead. Yeah, so um, we, mm. we have a, a, a one-year child, mm. uh, who is, uh, a, she's British. Mm -hmm. So I just wondered, um, is it possible to legalize this stay in the UK? Mm. This what? Is it whether it's possible to legalize this stay in the UK? What What are you saying? Right. I didn't understand what you are saying. Who who are you asking me question about? It's about my partner. Can you ask your partner to phone my office and book appointment so that you guys can come for proper consultation, please? Right. Okay. Yeah. My office number is zero two zero eight three zero nine. Zero right, zero two you. zero eight three zero nine double eight zero eight. Thank you. Thank you. Hmm. Can someone who wants tax credits tax credits? Aha, and your life, while your life has been a long time. Thank you for coming on board. When I when you are around, I know you are around. I always see your love button rolling. God bless you more, my sister. I want you to come back and fail on into. I want need the love button. I need the like button. <laughs> Hello. Hello. I know you are using true uh, talk talk land caller, uh, Manchester caller, because some of you uh, true callers already given it to me. Hello. Hello. <laughs> yes, hello. hello. Yes, hello. <laughs> hello. Good evening, ma. Good evening to you, Sammy Joke Ajibade. Caller, please talk properly. So whoever is talking, let let Sammy Joke Ajibade hear you properly. Boss Eddie Osagi, please, uh, call her, please go and pay your consultation fee. Thank you, Boss Eddie. Hello, yes, I can hear you. Yeah, good evening, ma. Good evening to you. Oh, Oh, yeah, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, please, ma, I just want to arrange the Please, call please go and pay your consultation fee. Thank you, Boss Eddie. Yes, I can hear you. And I just want to ask if somebody has a definite refugee in definite last year. Lower your device now. Hello? I'm going to be cutting you guys off. Whoever is calling me and failed to lower their device, it's really cracking my head up here. And there is no way I will accommodate it. So I'm going to cut it off. Honestly, I am. I don't want to be rude. I want to be so so accommodating, but at the same time, I think respect is reciprocate. So 
I will not tolerate it. If you cannot lower your device, I'm going to take it off. And Jola Oluwa, pretty. Love you too, my dear. Mama, okay. <laughs> Hello? Hello? My office number is on 0208. Yes, we can't hear her. Okay, all right, okay. Please write her again so she can see your message. <laughs> what is your office number? Who is writing me? Who is writing me? Write me again. Kelly Samuel. Mm -hmm. Write me again, whoever is communicating. Write me again so I can see your, I can see it. Hello? Um, unfortunately, WhatsApp will not go through because those who are calling directly will not allow WhatsApp to go through. So WhatsApp, can I advise you to go through direct call because WhatsApp is on and the number is on at the same time. So reduce your volume. That's for the person. Yeah, exactly. Come and reduce it. And about to reduce it because it's affecting my head. Reduce your volume. Yes, the volume is um, reduced. Hi, all. Okay. I have a question for you. Okay. So, I seek asylum for me and my kid a long time ago. And so, they accepted it, but they gave us two and a half years. Mm -hmm. My kids have been here for over 10 years. So, when my next application is coming in, can I apply for indefinite stay for them? For who? For my kids because they've been here for over 10 years from birth no not from birth from one of them came when she was seven and one of them came when she was 10 but they've been here over 10 years can i claim indefinite leave for them no if, if they haven't got the indefinite leave to remain have they got indefinite leave to remain no they have a limited leave to remain so they have so to carry the they have to get it under yeah. you now yeah yeah, yeah. Well, I have a leave to remain as well, but I'm saying for the next time I got an application, mm -hmm. can I do mm -hmm. an indefinite stay for them? Mm -hmm. They're not yeah. jumping the queue, no? No? So, uh, so after the stay, when I'm renewing it... You have to um, renew together. Yeah. Yeah, but they're not going for indefinite unless they are due under the application. But if you're just calculating because they are 10 years in the UK, no? So after the two and a half years, I just reapply, re and then whatever they give me is what they give me. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. How is this show? Hello. Hello. Hello, ma. Yeah. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening, ma. Good evening, ma. Yeah. Thanks for all the all the good talk, ma. Uh, I just need to uh, ask a question, ma, for my for my cousin. So. Basically, are you still alive, ma? I, alive? I am, I am, indeed. All right, okay. So, so basically, uh, he, he married um, an EU national of uh, Sudan of 13. But I think after, uh, when it gets to like Sudan of 13, they lost contact, basically. They were living together for a while. But after that, they lost contact. She was trying to connect, he was trying to get back and, uh, you know, uh, get in contact with the lady. But I think she's with someone else. Not married, but I think she has kids with someone else. So outside that, he has a child with another British national in the UK. So when his uh, five years is when his five or uh, five years expired, he applied based on uh, the child that he has with another British national. So he has like the two and a half years on five years route. Does that make sense, man? So the question is, um, can he, when the two and a half years finishes, can he apply like a long residency for ten years, or does the Yes, I was on the uh, AEA family member. Does it not count towards the uh, 10 years uh, long residency? The 10 years on the EA residence for five year a residence card, isn't it? You yes, want, ma'am. You want to count it with what? With which status? Because now he has a two and a half now. Mm -hmm. He has a two and a half now. So he was thinking either uh, when he finishes two and a half, of course, uh, then he's going to apply for another two and a half because they put him on the five years as well. The, uh, so that's the fine. Yeah. So at the end of the at the end of the second two and a half years, then he will apply for indefinite leave to remain now. Because oh, okay. they because they have years, it, it, okay. He will have been in the UK for ten years before the second two and a half finishes. I won't guarantee. Yeah. I won't guarantee you. Okay, man. I won't guarantee you. So don't lose it. Wait. So wait. For the, wait. Uh, the wait. It makes sense. 
I will not guarantee you. It's just common sense. I won't guarantee you that you get it. Because before he got that EA residence five years, it probably be an overstayer. No, there wasn't an overstayer. It wasn't it was an overstayer. Was, there wasn't an overstayer. No. What was he holding? Uh, I think he came in with uh, tier five or uh, uh, yeah, came with tier five then. He but was he was he able to apply and get the status straight away before it he expired? Came with, he came with yes, ma. He came with tier, tier five, two thousand and twelve. So before that one finishes, he married an EA national. So he got five years, two thousand and thirteen. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? So when the when the five years finishes, within that time he had a child with the British national. Mm -hmm. So before the five years finishes, obviously they couldn't contact the uh, the European woman anymore. So he applied based on his child. Mm -hmm. So that's when they gave another two and a half. Mm. On the five years, uh, on the five years uh, route, they gave him five years route. Mm. So they gave him two and a half first. I have not confident. Because they put him on five years route, don't forget. Yes. So yes. if I if I were him, I would endure. And wait for the five And months. wait. And go and get my indefinite leave to remain with peace of mind. Alright. I'm not confident. Okay. Alright, man. Thank you very much. My sister and my Yeah, it's okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Bye. Thank you, my right, Bye. And believe me when I say I'm not confident. Baby she saw and put me over confident. Why do we fuse there? <laughs> Hello. Hello. Why is all callers calling for someone? Peter was asked. I, I wonder. I wonder. Why is everybody calling for someone? Hello, ma. <laughs> Are you calling for someone as well? Hello, good evening, ma. Good evening. Are you calling for someone as well? Yes, I'm calling for myself and my wife. Okay, all right. Yes, my wife is uh, from Romania. Okay. Yeah, she has spent four years in this country. Okay. But she got uh, this uh, resident uh, documentation from the home office. Okay. It's like it's like a card. Yes. It's like a card of about four pages. Okay. So I don't know what can he, what can she do with that. She's from Bulgaria. She's she's from Romania. She's from Romania. And yes, she's working, but she's got the blue page, yes. the blue card, she, small card. Uh, the blue card, yeah. Uh, what did they put in there? Uh, residence, uh, residence or no, permanent? No, 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 yes, just resident documentation. Uh, it's just to show to her. To, it's, it's a registration certificate. Uh, to, a document registration. to show that she's uh, in the UK, isn't it? Yes. Uh, Romania, so she can be working freely now, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Does she's working? She she's been working there, but what is it? Does she need to apply for indefinite leave to remain as regards this uh, Brexit issue? I don't think so. What have you got? Myself. Yeah, under her. What have you got? I got five years. Has she is she been in the UK for five years? No, she's been there for about four years. So she's not ready for the five years. So if she claim if she clocked five years, then she can apply for the permanent residence. Okay, she's mm -hmm. five years. She's not well, five can years. We apply together? Can we apply together? Uh, why not? Yeah. But, you know, I, I got five years, and yeah. this is just the. the and you're not due to, year. you're not due to, to, to apply now, so you're just on second year. She can apply next year or anytime she clocks five years. The, 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 the gate will be open for European, but because of the uncertainty in our Brexit um, documentation now, we don't know when yes, the, we are not too sure when the gates will be open for them to make their application in the UK. Okay. And like I said earlier on, I can I will repeat again. We are more likely to ask for extension on our submission. So March twenty nine is not definitive. It's not final. Okay. Yes, we are more likely to ask okay. to ask for extension. Definitely, sorry, ma. Definitely, she cannot apply by this March because she's not five years already. No, she's not. But the the, so the, the door will be open. They will open the door for Europeans to start putting application through, but not now because we haven't sorted ourselves out. So we're not going okay. to open any door for Europeans now. Okay, but let's assume they open it, man. Will she able to apply for the indefinitely? If she has spent five years, she will get PR. Okay, but she's she's just on four years. That's what I'm saying. She needs to be five years. You can you say I cannot give answer to it now because there's nothing inside it now. There's nothing on ground. So you're asking me something I don't have an answer for. And I don't like giving okay. a wrong answer. 
Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, another thing I want to ask, ma, if it's five years by next year, and can we both apply together? Am I going to be given indefinite as well? As, you are not as going as to be given indefinite because you have not finished your five years of exercise of treaty rights. Okay. Then this card, can she travel with it now? Because we want to travel before March and after. Travel okay, to where? She's, she's, to she's, to she's, she's European. She can travel country. to anywhere. She can go to Europe. Okay, she can sure. go to Nigeria. If she, if she get Nigerian visa, she can travel to Nigeria. She, but she must get Nigerian visa. And if she's going to you, uh, uh, hey, if she's to go to other European country, yeah. yeah, she can travel to a European country. Let me move on to the next stage. Have, we don't want to have a problem when we are. Please, when you are asking questions, you have to be brief and short. It's, it's of no use to holding me down when others are calling and calling, and I'm, you know, it's really not fair to others waiting. Yeah. Please, once you are ask, uh, once you ask one uh, one question, that should be enough. The rest, if you want further question, come to office for consultation. I'm not going to answer you two questions or three questions. I will only answer one question. Hello. Hello. Good evening, Madam. Good evening to you, dear. Um, please have a question for myself, please. My question is about right of residence. Um, I just wanted to find out. Can you hear me, please? I can, yes. Okay. Um, I wanted to find out. You know, right of residence. You count from the first. Um, you count from the wedding till five years. But um, at a certain time, I'm still with my partner. But at a certain time, they. They were questioning my marriage. That was it was a marriage of convenience. So, but I was later given my passport after about a year and eight months, and I was asked to stop working. So my question now is, am I going to count from when the marriage was on until five years, or after? Um, I have to take out those years that I was asked not to work. I you got your residence card. Yes, I have my residence card. Your five years is from the date stamped on the residence card. Um, my five years was uh, was given to me six months after my wedding. Yeah, so it's from then. Yes. Because there's no guarantee that because the fact that you married to the EA person doesn't mean you will be qualified to have that residence card. Yes, but the question is, sorry, the question is, um, you know, they were questioning my wedding that it was a marriage of convenience. So um, my passport was taken from me for a year and six months. So, but later they did their checks and it was all right. So I was giving back my passport. So I'm still, uh, my question now is, am I to count from then, or should I take off the one year, six months that my passport was taken? No, you're not counting that. You're counting from the time of your thing, because when they took it, they, they never revoked it, is it? They said they were going to revoke. But was, oh, there, a stamp to, to, was there a stamp to no, show that it was no, revoked? No, no it, it continues. No. It continues. All right. It okay, continues. I'll come see you then, yeah. because I'm due. Thank no, you very much. it continues. Much. That's fine. Bye. Yeah. Yeah, Dari, thank you, my thank you, Dari. But you tell me, but sure back in me. The caller don't want to pay me. Your caller is just asking me questions. <laughs> I love you guys, Dari. I'm all alone. I love all of you. Please go ahead. Hello. Yes. Yeah. Good evening, ma. Good evening to you. Yeah, I just want to ask a question. Please go ahead quickly. A, go ahead quickly. I have a okay. I have a partner. He, he got a residence on two two and a half, and he got the third one last year. Mm -hmm. Can you send it back to home office to uh, to collect indefinite? Ah, uh, madam, that's too fast now. <laughs> <laughs> Your partner has two and a half years twice. Yeah, he got the third one last year, around November. Yeah, but they gave they, they are granting him under ten years route. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So he needs to wait for the last one. He cannot escape it unless they change okay. it. Unless it has been changed in between and changed to five years route. Oh, if it's okay. not changed from ten years to five years, I'm afraid so. He's got to wait for another two and a half years before he can apply for oh. ILR. Oh, okay. Okay. And why are you pushing too much for him? Leave him now. Uh, no, because he, uh, the law that have changed. There's nothing. Uh, there's no law that changed. Leave him alone. Let him be enjoying himself. Okay. Thank you, ma. And you're and you What are you pushing for? <laughs> the Secretary of State that changed you to 10 years, 5 years. <coughs> she knows what she was doing at that time. So enjoy while last now. Hello? 
Hello? When you are using WhatsApp, they're not going to let you go through. Believe me. I'm going to block block here. Hello? Hello? Yeah, hi. Hello, good evening, ma. Good evening to you. Thank you, Miss Wally Thank, Thank, Thank you for the good work. Um, um, I just want to ask, um, I've been in the country legally for five years, and um, I'm married to an Asian national. I've been, we've been married for three years, and I have um, residence permit now um, that expires 2021. I, I want to ask, um, am I eligible to apply for the settlement that is an indefinite leave to remain? What have you got? What have you got? Um, I've got a residence permit um, for five years. But it expires 2021. You got residence, you got uh, five years, yeah? Yes, I'm And uh, so you have to wait. There's no automatic of doing it, too. You have to wait to the last 28 days. Okay, okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank yeah. you very much. Yes, bye. Thank you. Before I take calls now, I need to respond to my audience. I need to respond to my audience. So whoever is online, please wait. Yes, caller, you are jumping. Um, caller, you are too fast. Caller... Uh, no, he hasn't come. He will call me when he's arrived. John Mackinde, he will call me. He will call me. No, he hasn't arrived. <laughs> he hasn't arrived. He will call me, John. Thank you. Yeah, he will call me once he's around. Akeo Shola Obayemi said, I have a, having a Nigerian, having a Nigerian born US spouse that you love so much and you didn't marry her because hope of papers but she's taking advantage of you financially emotionally i am down and i was not free with her for some for some days because she refused to listen to me i need her help the bill is too much on me are you in america a nigerian born u.s spouse u.s that's not for us that's united uh, state law Akeo Shola Abayomi, where are you? Can I can you tell me whether you are in the United Kingdom? Because the moment you say US spouse, it means it's a US citizen. I haven't got jurisdiction. I haven't got jurisdiction. Mama, you are too much. I did try you. Miss Mr. Lushola, where yeah, people with too much questions should book appointment and pay consultation now. I be she be you pay your own Mr. Where yeah, exactly? Eh? Exactly now. Paper now wahala or send your day around. Paper now wahala. Caller, you are jumping, you are too fast. You know, you know. <laughs> Don Musty, where's your question? I can't see your question. I don't. I can't see your question. If I see it, I'll grab it and I'll answer you. Trust me. I can't see. Yes, yes. Hello? Please go ahead quickly. I want to answer Boss Eddie Osagi. Please answer. Go quickly. Yes. Okay, madam. Good evening. Good evening to you. Good evening to you. Please go ahead quickly. You can forget all this funeral, all this funeral people they speak because every day you came, I beg you. You <laughs> can speak our language, our real language. I'll be there. That's how they do. That's how they do. That's how they do. I mean, the reason I call you just because of this issue of the uh, presence of a team. Mm -hmm. My partner, she mm. get a document that is a Shanti Ju, Shanti Ju citizen, especially from Belgium. Mm -hmm. She get document certifying permanent resident. Mm -hmm. That's what she was giving. Mm -hmm. Hello. Uh, the issue that they say. Because of this issue of registration, does she need to register a girl or may she just forget? Because they don't, because they don't already give a document certifying permanent resident for years. They've given permanent residence. Yes, but that's what, I, what is written a document that she was given. I'm now you're telling us a document certifying permanent resident. Uh, that's PR now, so the person has got it. 
Okay, and she no need to go like this again. No, 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 no. That's it. Because she's the fear. See, may not come and fetch her. No, no, no. That is it. That is it. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. What about me? I don't need to also bother me. No, 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 no. You're fine. Because I'm coming outside here with us today. Where you get to the stage of going for permanent residence, then you apply as well. Uh, you apply when you get to the state. You haven't got your permanent residence, have you? No, no, not uh, again. Uh, no. So when you get to that stage, you will get it. Yes, yes. Uh, your volume is cracking my head. Your volume is really, really cracking me. No, no, no. If you're already on the residence card, you are fine. That's fine. Okay. Yes, okay. yes. Thank you. That's I tell you, I said, 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 which they give on an indefinite leave to remain for UK. <laughs> it won't affect you. It, it won't uh, affect I you. I said they like that. That they come to me say, you should want to change. That means you can't collect with you. But until they tell you, you say, they like that. That comes. As I see the other thing, come for leprechaun fast, but we say no one, we say no one pretty fast. I mean, I mean, which they give in a indefinite. After definite, you get pretty fast, but we say no one for leprechaun. No need. My brother, take care. Let me answer the next question. Thank you. Thank you. You need people like that. Everybody cannot be the same. Well, I can't laugh, Jerry. You definitely need... You need people like this. They call them Amuludu. But say... Sure you understand us, Agi. Honestly, time don't lapse, long time. And he's still there, Kajoli me with his uh, phonetics. That is Nigeria. That is proper Nigeria. That is Nigeria for you. And that is proper Nigeria. I salute my, I throw away my heart to that person. It was well spoken, a uh, broken language. Well done, Dari, with the pigeon. Yes. Mm. Guys, I've got to go now because I need to be getting ready. My husband will be around any time from now to pick me up on his way going home. So I need to get ready. I didn't come with my car today. So I've got to be ready. Otherwise, he will leave me and I will struggle to get home with the taxi. I want to appreciate all of you. I want to thank you. Let me see if I can give this uh, WhatsApp person an opportunity to quickly talk. It's not connected. WhatsApp person, can you talk quickly? One minute. One minute. Hello. Hello. Yes, yes. Good Good thank evening. You, no yeah. um, uh, I, I would like to ask a, a question. I have five years leave to remain under uh, uh, EU national. And this Brexit of a thing, I just want to ask, do I need to do anything at the moment? Does the Brexit gonna, uh, affect or something? Don't worry about Brexit. Brexit will take care of itself. Nobody should panic. Please don't panic. Don't do anything silly, anything out of law. Just stay there and wait. Don't panic. If you still have your status, if you're under EU law, just carry on. If you're 28 days before you expire, come to us and let us go in for renewal. Apart from that, don't panic. Everybody online, please don't panic. Brexit, it will take care of itself. Don't panic. I beg of you. Tomorrow will take care of itself. We are more likely to ask, to ask for extension the way we are going at the moment. So if I were you, I won't panic. I won't raise any panic button. Stay put and carry on with your status as it is. Nothing to worry about. Thank you, guys. I've got to go now. I've got to go. I've got to go, ladies and gentlemen. I've got to go and I'm going to take that off straight away so that you will know I've got to go. So the phone is off. But in the few minutes that left before my husband called me, I'm going to say, you did answer my question. Thank you, okay? Daddy Tiwa online. Ara, Janet Ashimolowo. Ara, he's not here yet. Thank you. 
Stanley Gaze, I can't see your question. It's my Igbo brother that want to kill me. That's why. And I cannot do without that, my Igbo brother. Because people like that, they put salt into the soup that hasn't got salt. They put sugar into tea. Put honey into it and make it rosy and juicy. So people like Peter or Zaz, I can't do without them. Because they have to, somebody has to be different. It will reward Victor. What do you need for renewal? What does the he you partner need for renewal? That's consultation now. Google of any. Alright, there's no freebies on that one. Please, my you didn't answer my question. Where is your question? Pull it out quickly. We are doing Malasha I bless you. I have to go now. We are there. Lasha has already told me. So I need to go now. Thank you. Thank you. Ari Rumen, I worry your Ashiru. Thank you. Monyolu Wakasali. Oh, thank you. Stanley Igeze. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Joshua Toya. Father Kemi Adele. A very well, Victor, Mr. Ibrahim Okonla, thank you. Mr. Larry Wajuda, Mola Lumide, thank you. Mr. Fred Stevenson, Stephen, uh, Miss Comfort Okiria, Oluwa Bukola, Mi Olu Bukola, thank you. Janet Ashimolowo, thank you, dear. Thank you, thank you. I'm off now, I'm going now. Oluwa Bukola, thank you, thank you, thank you to all of you, ladies and gentlemen, the most yet your large princess blessing. Now, NTA New Scholar, <laughs> honestly, correct, a boutique brother. Edine Ukidas, he said, correct, a boutique brother, I salute, oh, yes now, uh -huh. yes now, so thank you, Lola Reese, thank you, Ronke Rukis, thank you, uh, Miss Olushola Uweye, call her, that's enough now, thank you, Miss Uweye, Miss, Mr. Rotimi Odofi, Elejo Uweye, that is it for the caller. Princess Okusa, call her, now, now waiting now, call her, now waiting now, I didn't remember Miss, of course. Bolaji, Ola Lekan, Bosse de Oshagi, Bosse de Afolabi, Rotimi, Odofin, Fatima, Princess. Everybody, I cannot call all of you. I want to appreciate you, Miss Abide Miola Tiche, Christiana Diola, me. Everybody, I appreciate you. I say thank you. I salute you. I throw my heart to you at all times. Great respect, with great humility. I respect you all. Thank you for patronizing me on my platform. Without you, there is no lawyer to Kubolag Baye. So therefore, you are all mine, and I love you, and I cannot love you less. Always have it at the back of your mind that I am independent with what I am doing, and I can never make mistake and let it go wrong to, to, to make you guys sad or to upset any of you. But I love you. I love you all. To those that love me special, I love them special as well. So, I love you all, but take good care until next time when I have time to come on board. I am a solicitor. I take case to court. I am a senior immigration practitioner. I take case to court. So, does that answer your question? Somebody who asked me a question. I am not just an immigration lawyer. I am a Supreme Court lawyer. So, I take cases to court. I handle cases. You understand? But when I don't have time, then I shred it out. I give it out to people to go and don't to go and get it done on my behalf. But when I'm giving it out to people to go and do it, I don't give it out to anybody who is lower. I give it out to class of my class or superior to go and get it done. So don't be panic. Don't don't be. I do the underground work myself. So if I'm not available to attend and I'm sending someone, I will have completed your argument, your legal argument and everything. It's just for the person that's going to speak in court. And that's what they call confidence. Ladies and gentlemen, I've got to go now. I love you, and I cannot love you less. I have to go and join my husband. Bye for now. Take care, guys. Otherwise, I say, my friend, they live. Tell me, be more to Car park is a problem. Thank you. I, I love you all. Bye for now. <laughs>